What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. Today we're going to be taking a deeper look into the Ben Chilwell to Chelsea transfer news because we know this transfer news has been dragging throughout the whole season. And it looks like it could potentially be coming to a conclusion. As usual, I've got Neil, wrong way, I've got Neil from the Beyond the 90 LCFC podcast. What, any thoughts you want to say? Uh, yeah, just because we've got a record of the chill, chill world. There's a lot of information that obviously as Leicester fans that we know that mm. from, from the inside and from the Leicester perspective and if we think he's going to go. Um, and I've just got a couple of things over the, over, the, over the season and last season since he properly came into the team and obviously coming into England is a big thing as well. Um, that most, even the media hasn't really picked up on that much, but that's just because we've been following Leicester for a long time in the same way because you've been following Chelsea. Yeah. There's all the little details that you pick up on players that you're like, okay, this can make a difference to something like a transfer. Oh, so, like, yeah, a lot of things into that. Slip under the radar. Yeah, yeah. So one of them, I'll just jump straight into it. So we played against Burnley, um, which was, I think, about middle of January. And it was strange because all of a sudden we looked at the lineup and... Hamza Chowdhury and Ben Chilwell were completely missing from the lineup. Nobody, it was no, no, lift, no, no list of injuries, no, no mention of anything. It, they were just dropped. And with Ben Chilwell, he's a starter for our team, as you can imagine. Like, he's, mm. a, he's a player that starts every single game. So we were all a bit confused. And so uh, Ian Stringer, the, he does stuff for BBC Radio Leicester, he asked, he goes, okay, um, Hamza, Ch Hamza Chowdhury wasn't in the squad and Ben Chilwell it wasn't in the squad. And Brendan Rodgers just goes, oh, they were unavailable. And then that's it. So the, man, so the owners go, so the presenter goes, what do you mean by, is that, do you want to expand on that? And he goes, no. Nope. So there's things like that that we were Leicester fans going, right, that was, that was strange. Like, why was he just dropped for one game? You would have said, oh, he's got an injury or he's tired. Or yes, he's been on international duty where potentially there would be um, an ease of rest or something like that. He just said he's unavailable. Which again, just it was it was a really weird thing that happened. Was there but any similarities between both of them and that, or were you building up to that anyway? Yeah. So what had apparently happened? So Hamza Chowdhury is kind of built into our squad, and he's kind of the second player behind in Diddy that mm. will be that CDM role. And apparently, through kind of the grapevine and what from from the sources that we know about Leicester, um, Chilwell was kind of boasting that in January that Chelsea came for him for a contract and he was kind of boasting about how much money he was going to go and stuff like that, which is why he was dropped. And Hamza Chowdhury was, I think the manager wanted him to go on loan. So because we have a third CDM, the, the, basically the guy that we got in to replace Kante that basically got injured and we, we didn't really have. Mm. So they wanted him to go on loan, prove himself kind of, but he didn't want to go. So that, that was the reason why them two were dropped. So for different reasons, but it was just was at the same time. So... There's things like that that was through the grapevine. We heard that he was kind of boasting about, oh, he really wants to contract with Chelsea. He was potentially going there. And if you look, for, especially for a Leicester fan, that's when our form and his form started to really drop. So something else that when we came past lockdown, I think one of your ex-players that plays for Brighton, is it Lamptey? Tarek Lamptey, yeah. Yeah. So he went to Brighton, he went to Brighton right after the lockdown and... He's not, he seems like a decent enough player, but he hmm. gave Chilwell the runaround. It's different when you've got somebody like a Mares or a Sterling or a Pulisic or something like that, that's like a getting on like world-class kind of player. Yeah. But Lamptey is decent, but he was just, he was just, he wasn't he's still kind very of raw, player. isn't he? That's why. Yeah, I... he's, yeah, so you were saying. Oh, no, no, I was leaving it on to you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, it's just, so from the Lamptey thing, I was like, this dude's younger. He's, he's obviously from a Chelsea youth team, so it's obviously quality there. But even he's getting, Chilwell's getting in the run around, and Chilwell didn't look too bothered, kind of thing. It, so, especially towards January, the fans did start, he was one of the players that the fans started to really turn on, and it really backfired because um, we just didn't. He, a lot of the time, I think you probably saw, or he, he had a decent game against Chelsea, but he'd run forward, get the ball kind of like just kind of jog forward, get the ball and then just kind of pass it back and wasn't too mm. sure exactly what he was. He wasn't confident enough going forward. And you'd think with a manager like Brendan Rodgers, he's the kind of player that with our squad has definitely got the best out of certain players like James Madison, kind of Yuri Tielemans, uh, Damari, Damari Gray's kind of, he's improved a lot this year. Harvey Barnes he has. So 
in that young English kind of squad, they are you, they are getting the best of. So it, it's something that we were looking at. And I think he is overall, I've got more stuff, but I think he is going to come to you and it's just, you are going to, you are going to have that, but I don't think it's going to be the 80 million that's been bounded around. You don't think so? Cause I, you, we were talking about, yeah. we were trying to check his details. He's got like a four year deal left and he's a vital player to you guys' squad. You don't need to sell him. He's more valuable to it, to you guys than I think any money could be because I don't think you'd end up getting a better left back. You might, to be fair. You've had some pretty shrewd signings over the last couple of years, so I'm not going to discredit your scouting system like that. But he's still going to be a key player that you guys are going to lose. Well, the thing is, um, he's not in. When he came into the squad in eighteen nineteen, he was looking really, really good. Like it was, it was still raw. He was still kind of making mistakes, and he let quite a few go. All his, he lost his man and made um, it, like issues and stuff. But in my opinion, he was better in eighteen nineteen than he was this year. Just gone, even though he's got more goals and stuff. But the way he plays, the confidence he has to go forward. So he was taking over a position of Christian Fuchs, who is a great, reliable left back for us. But this guy could get up and down the pitch a lot more. He can send in cross, kind of like. Alonso for you guys like you know what you're getting with him but there's not much on the defensive side yeah no worries um yeah so he so we know what we were getting we were looking at a really good player but if you would have offered me then and said is this guy worth 80 million we said no but I think overall this guy is worth about this year I think we're looking at probably 40 50 maybe 60 we'll get for him because what happened is everybody's going to compare it to the Maguire thing um of what happened with Maguire for 80 mil to Man United, but that was just a different set of circumstances. So they don't. The, the issue was is that they looked at the Liverpool team and they saw right Van Dijk came in, he can improve the team, but they couldn't go get a Van Dijk internationally because he would cost too much. Well, not even a cost problem. They didn't have enough English players, so they needed a centre back badly. They need somebody that could like a, somebody that could command the back line with Premier League experience, and that is English. And after the World Cup, you can imagine that Maguire was on the lips of everyone. And I think Mourinho wanted him for Man United, but then Solskjaer got him in eventually. But the reason why it was 80 million is because we set that price and we knew that Man United didn't have another option. So we kind of, so the 80 mil that's been bounded around at the moment, it, if you look at the stuff that Maguire, they were saying, they said about Maguire, they're saying very similar things about Chilwell. And if you've looked since the year that we won the Premier League, we've lost one of our main players basically from that. So we've lost Kante to you guys, then Drinkwater, uh, Mares year after, then we've lost, uh, what's it called? Maguire just recently as well. So it just seems like we get players, we make them better, and then we shift them onto the next level. Normally, I would say would be okay, but there's a couple of issues as well that are playing into this as well. So Leicester have got a stadium expansion that's going to come. And as you can imagine, from a Chelsea perspective, that costs a lot of yeah. money. Another thing as well is that this year, they're moving into a new training ground and that will cost 100 mil. So that money is not available now because of COVID. And one of the things about the, the King Power brand is that they have a massive take in the duty-free in Thailand. So as you can imagine, with people not traveling, they're apparently, from reading a couple of stuff and a couple of Leicester blogs, they've reduced down to less than 20% of what they're earning. So that's been massively affected. And that was the main income that has been put into the football club. So we can't play the same tactics that we did with Maguire because just with COVID and everything, it's changed. So from that perspective, I think that we are probably going to sell him but I'm, I'm not sure he's coming to you for 80 mil so so what you guys think you're more in the position where you now have to sell in order to buy so yeah from from speaking to Leicester fans and stuff it feels like we're going to have to sell Chilwell then buy other players that's the yeah, issue that's been the case for most of the clubs this season to be fair we've been able to take advantage of it with the transfer ban so you're saying it's because it's because we're looking as most likely suitors but you're also saying as well that Ben Chilwell's had his eye focused on a move for a long time. And you're saying that might be the reason for why his form's dipped as well? Yeah, it's something that 
that we've seen with Maguire as well. So Maguire had the same thing with the first year he joined us, he was absolutely brilliant. Like he was putting in amazing challenges and stuff like that. And then the World Cup happened, the the um the Man United thing nearly happened and he didn't go bad, but he went to like a six or a seven out of ten. So when we sold him for eight million, everybody's like, well this is great. And we didn't know Siunchu was going to be this good in replacement for him. But the the issue that we're having is that when we went, so we looked at a couple of other players. So we got the 80 mil, I think, straight up front for that money. And we looked to buy a replacement. So we looked at Tarkovsky. We looked at um, Nathan Ake. And I can't remember who else. I think we looked at Lewis Donk as well from Brighton. So them three players, basically, they all them three teams, we asked, go, hey, we're looking at this player. Can we buy them? And they go, well, we've just saw you've sold, sold Maguire for 80 mil. So we're going to charge you 60 mil. And you can't really complain because they're doing the same thing that we did to Man United and they know we've got the money. So we didn't buy any in the end, but we had a good young player in Suyuncu that was waiting in the wings that, again, we knew was going to make mistakes from time to time, but we didn't expect it to have this good a season. But like back to the Chelsea thing, we, we've, we're we used to selling players to Premier League clubs. We're not quite a Southampton where somebody like a Liverpool will completely ram raid them and take everybody and all the or like Tottenham where they took even the manager. Mm. But at the same time, we are a bit of a, we'll, we'll get a player, we'll bring them up through the academy, we'll train them and then we'll sell them on for bigger profit. And this year, because of the COVID situation, I think teams like yourself and your Man United's and your Man City's and Liverpool's will have much bigger and better benefits because of that um, overall. So you'll be able to raid clubs like us so I think he'll come to you for the minimum of 40 mil to probably 60 mil. Don't you think, though, that you guys are trying to get away from that side of your club? Because the last two seasons, you guys have really looked like you're threatening the top six. And this season, it, if it wasn't for the way the season ended, I mean, you guys were, you guys were top four for most of the season. And you know, you're only dropped at the last game of the season. So next season, you guys are going to be challenging as well. You guys will want to keep some of your assets. We will, which is why we've secured down. But all, of, of all the assets that we've got, um, Chilwell's probably the one that we're most likely to get rid of. For the reason, because Madison's uh, more important to our squad. Jamie Vardy's obviously super important to our squad. Uh, Yuri Tillemans in Diddy is super, super important. Schmeichel, I know he's had a few rumours, but I think that's between you, me, me and you, that's all crap. Like Man United aren't going to sign a thirty-five-year-old, thirty-three-year-old keeper over De, over De Gea. That's just not nah, going to happen. Not when they got Ro- Romero and what's his name, Dean Henderson coming back, anyways. Exactly. Just to, yeah, just a quick note on that as well. Just to, I know it's Man United thing, but he won't. He's he's from coming to Leicester. He's he's tried to step out of. Imagine if your dad was like one of the best keepers in the world, and you're coming into the game as a keeper you'd be living in your dad's shadow for the rest of time. So 2016 was a really good year for him because it was the first time that he won a league and the emphasis was on him, not his dad. Because up till then, he'd not as achieved as many trophies. He's not won anything compared to his dad. So in that case, it just doesn't make any sense that he'd want to go. I think it is a bit media talk where they're going, oh, the Schmeichel comes back and uh, to, to the club and it just sounds really Such romantic. It's a great story for them, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, but nothing. yeah, overall, I think that, like back to Chelsea kind of thing, the, the fans got on his back a little bit and that really hurt him. So we thought coming into lockdown with the fans not being there, he would be able to step up um, when he was fit to the next level. And then he's not really done that. Um, Didn't really see much from him in that cup game we had either, to be fair. Yeah, um, I don't know if you remember. Obviously, you're probably focusing on, on more of your own team, but he what you'd do is he'd get so he, there's playing two at the back with Siunchu and Evans. So Evans would give him the ball, he'd run kind of up to or like jog up to the halfway line, get the ball, go uh, and then pass it back to the defender. And you're like, come on, man, like you, you can, you can, I'm not trying to slate the dude, but at the same time, I think he has had his head turn. But he didn't threaten like a forward should. Because if you're not that good at defending, okay, that's fine. But you should be able to go forward and take on a player or play a killer pass on the inside or a one-two that you can get past the player like, like an Alonso can. The only thing is like really an audition for him. Sorry? In that case, wouldn't it be like an audition for him? You'd expect more. Yeah, but I don't. from your end, I don't think you guys see, saw much of him on that match, did you? 
No, nah, he wasn't really that threatening to her. I think he was pretty decent going forward, but he just didn't really have that consistency. And on the turn, he didn't look that well either when we're transitioning from defense to attack. He looked like he got caught out a couple of times as well. Yeah, he's um, he will get caught out. That's the issue. But is I th- with with a with a manager like Brendan Rodgers, you'd think you'd get the best out of him because he's a young manager. He knows what he's doing. He's worked with young people. He's worked with people like Raheem Sterling and stuff before and taken them on maybe not the level that he's at Man City, but he's definitely taken them up a level or two. Mm. And you'd think that you'd be able to do that because he's taken, as I was saying before, other people's careers. To even within Leicester to like a new, new level. And Chilwell is one of our assets, but we're going to have to sell before we can buy just because I was saying our profits, our, our margins have dipped so much because of the COVID thing to, to the point now where Leicester have, for the Premier League, you won't see, the, you won't see this King Power logo anymore. You'll see, um, well, Thailand smiles with you because they're trying to work with the tourism board to get more people into thailand so that they can obviously get more money from the duty free that's sick advertising though but that's just the way football is nowadays it's all about the advertising and the profit side exactly so it's it's it it is what it is but i think yeah for the chelsea perspective i think you are probably going to get him i think that's pretty much everything i've got here but it's just basically the, the combination of him being rumored to leave i think him getting into that england squad and like knocking out that position in like quick time has made it everybody put their eyes on him and we know that just from Maguire as well as soon as a player outside the traditional top six get into that squad and has like a decent game all eyes just start looking on them so I'd imagine about if we're about this time next year there'll be exactly the same situation for James Madison okay well guys you've heard it from here Chilwell to Chelsea looks very likely we're not sitting there saying it's confirmed but we're saying it looks likely and looks like it's very possible. And with all the transfer rumors that have been going around this season, it's no surprise. But guys, if you agree or disagree with any of our points, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Check out the Beyond the 90 LCFC podcast. I've got the hand wrong again. It's this side. But check it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, any final words from you? No, just thanks for having me on. And yeah, if you guys can come over to our channel and check out the perspective on, we'll, we'll probably update you on the whole Chilwell situation because it feels like it's going to go on a, a, long, uh, a bit longer. But yeah, uh, just yeah, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more like Leicester kind of, kind of content. And we'll definitely have Lewis on when we play Chelsea next year. That'll be a good fun. Yeah, defo. So you guys heard it first as well. There'll be another Chill World video on their channel as well. So don't forget to check it out. Like and subscribe. Don't forget to press that bell notification button as well. And we'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Up the Charles.